Void Mage Gamer is now partnered with Flipside Gaming. So you can use the promo code on their website, all caps, Void Mage, to get 10% off all orders, $10 or more. It's a great way that you can support both Flipside Gaming and Void Mage Gamer's channel. Also, until October 7th, all orders that use the promo code will be automatically entered to win a booster box of Guilds of Ravnica. Entries are limited one per person just to keep things fair, so be sure to check that out. Hello guys, welcome back to another Top 10 Commander video. Since we are nearing Halloween, I know it's technically September, but we gotta get in the mood. Eventually, we're gonna go over some spooky cards, but for now, we're just gonna go over a Top 10 of the best Spirit cards in Commander, in my opinion, of course. I think Spirits are a very strong creature type. There's a lot of tribal support for it, but yet we haven't really seen a ton of Commander influence. You'll see some cards that are more geared for Standard or even Modern that deal with with spirit tribal but it just seems that we have a ton of spirits and they're all in the five colors of magic so let's start it off here with the honorable mentions i have four of them here one of my personal favorite cards to use now it's hilarious it's basically like spore frog and white Kami of False Hope. I would argue it's just as good as Spore Frog because there are a lot of aristocrat decks in black white that can behave in a similar manner to the aristocrat decks in green black that would use something like Spore Frog. So it's just as useful. I think it's hilarious. Also kind of underappreciated. Kami of the Crescent Moon sees a ton of play as well. When Tiny Leaders was actually a thing and people did play it a little bit, Kami of the Crescent Moon was one of, if not the most powerful commander option, basically howling mine on a creature. Now sees play in a ton of decks, whether it's Nekusar or Group Hug. Very valuable just having that extra card draw. They have Kira, Great Glass Spinner. Sees some play in Modern, but really in Commander, I don't think it sees as much play. If your deck needs that extra line of protection, if you're Hardcore Control, Kira's pretty good, especially if you have any sort of combos that need to be protected. And Divinity of Pride is one of my personal favorite cards from the Lorewind block, where you had a lot of those hybrid mana creatures. Five mana in hybrid black-white, so that's really cool. And it kind Kind of behaves a little bit like a Sarah Ascendant, where it kind of takes advantage of the starting life total in Commander, and it becomes pretty much an 8-8 with lifelink and flying. It's a lot more tame and a lot more fair than Sarah Ascendant, but still sees a ton of play in a lot of decks, because an 8-8 flyer with lifelink is still pretty good for just 5 mana. Now let's start it off here with the actual top 10. Number 10, I'm guilty of doing this a few times in my videos, but I will have ties if I think that these cards are all around the same level. We have Miyajin of Seeing Winds, Knight's Reach, and Life's Web. The other two Miyajin I don't really care for because they're basically just Wrath the God or Armageddon effects, which we already have Wrath the God or Armageddon. With these three, you have abilities that you really don't see anywhere else. You can cheat all the creatures that are in your hand into play with Life's Web, which is pretty crazy. A little bit more situational than the other two. I love Knight's Reach because I'm sort of a defense wins championships kind of guy. If you empty all of your opponent's hands, they're going to be hard-pressed to stop you. And then seeing wins is just amazing because drawing a card for each permanent you control, even if you don't have a lot of creatures or any other permanents, chances are you had the lands or the artifacts available just to tap for the mana to play Miyajin of seeing wins. I mean, they're all pretty expensive. Maybe not the best spirits on this list because they're restricted to only being cast from your hand to get those divinity counters, unless you have a way to put a divinity counter on it, which there are very few cards that actually interact rack like that but if you are able to cast them from your hand remove the divinity counter they just do amazing things really powerful creatures number nine is karlov of the ghost council a very strong orzov commander option and just a really cool guy in the lore i think he's tase's grandfather can't wait for this to be continued in the guilds of ravnica block pretty much just functions like a typical life gain deck you want to throw in a lot of stuff like soul warden just so you can gain a bunch of life it's not so much about gaining a lot of life but rather having the life gain triggers so you can gain life at your upkeep off of something. You can gain life when creatures enter the battlefield. You can gain life at your end step. Gain life when creatures attack. Creatures have lifelink. Gain life that way. Get more counters on Karlov. You can remove counters and then start exiling creatures. Or you can just leave those counters on there and just go with Voltron and swing with your very cheap commander option. And you're in the colors for Infect. Another very underrated thing about him. But you have a ton of removal. You're in the colors for removal already. So it complements that kind of strategy well if you want to put a control shell around him. Number eight is Crypt Ghast. This sees play in just about every single mono black deck. I would even go as far as to say every two color black deck. And it doesn't really matter guys. I've had a ton of people ask me this since the beginning of my channel. The Extort mana symbol 
The hybrid black white doesn't count towards the actual devotion of the card or the color identity I should say so it can be put into any black deck doesn't have to be black white what it's just going to do is going to double the mana that your swamps are going to produce very simple card but the extort does give you value you get to gain some life off of that and it's a very underrated ability definitely should be taken advantage of number seven is karmic guide I don't understand why anybody wouldn't want to play a creature like this yes you do have the echo cost so you will have to eventually sacrifice her or just pay the echo cost if you're desperate i really don't see why you would do that there's so many decks that want to play a karmic guy just to bring a creature back you get a 2-2 blocker with flying capable of saving you bringing something back from your graveyard and the fact that it does die isn't necessarily a bad thing so if you want to play a reanimator or aristocrat deck with something like a 3 of scott of passage i personally think that karmic guide is perfect and it's usually a go-to whenever i want to play white i think it's just as important as playing something like a sun titan so yeah there's there you go one two number six is Carador ghost chieftain another very solid commander option this is definitely a reanimator deck so you're going to be playing something like karmic guide if you have a centaur spirit awesome creature type and you have great cost reduction especially in commander where the commander tax can get out of hand constantly replay him and then you get to recast a creature from your graveyard every turn just insane value mid to late game it's very difficult to stop these decks you really need to play graveyard hate for decks like these. Number five, we have Yosei the Morning Star. I love the dragon spirits from Kamigawa. More specifically, I love two of them. The other three are kind of average. Yosei is really powerful in Commander. Basically, like the aristocrat theme I've been mentioning, creatures die, they do stuff. Yosei does something really cool. You get to tap permanence, and that opponent's going to skip their next on tap step. So you can basically lock them out a turn. You can attack, and then you don't have to worry about any sort of revenge. Comes back to you, and then you get to attack again. Hopefully they're still tapped or whatever they have blockers. You keep them tapped. That's perfect. Your other opponents can hate on them as well. Very political card. Absolutely love it. But the next one, number four, is Kokosho, the Evening Star. This one I think is even better because it's way more abusable. I would say there are some locks with Yosei, but I think the ways that you can win, you're probably going to want to do it with Kokosho. Kind of like Grey Merchant of Asphodel. A little bit more tame though because it's not going to deal with devotion. We still get the same dragon, flyer, just as deadly in combat combat so i think that's a fair trade-off for six mana you have something that you can constantly bring back kill off gain a bunch of life drain life from your opponents and i just think it's a little bit more playable than yosei the other dragon spirits while they might see some play i just don't think they're as strong or they don't do something big in commander then we have number three which is brago king eternal one of my personal favorite commander options nothing really to do with spirits like a lot of the other cards on this list not really tribal synergies but what you have here is just a very unique creature that off a damage trigger you get to blink any number of non-land permanents you have they come back during combat you can untap your artifacts this way something like basalt monolith blink it when it's tapped have it come back untapped and of course the obvious way to abuse this is with a ton of etb creatures like your mole drifters or even your karmic guides i think that's another great way but yeah the deck built around brago is going to be pure value off of etbs it can be really oppressive if you want to go with stasis locks or winter orb locks anything like that since you're able to to blink your artifacts something like a gilded lotus you can have that come into play untapped you'll always have the mana to pay for something like a stasis so that can be pretty deadly overall very strong very popular commander option number two we have seedborn muse i know for so many people it's puzzling why prophet of crufix has been banned for so long and seedborn muse has not been seedborn muse has had a lot more time to do a lot more damage you get to untap all of your permanents so you get to untap your lands you get to untap your creatures yeah you don't get to flash to play creatures but still you'll always have mana for responses it seems you'll always have mana to do all of your stuff even if you can't flash into play creatures you can still activate abilities my personal favorite deck to throw her into is tassiger because you do have a four mana activated ability that is just nothing but pure value if you get to activate it three or four times in a single turn untap do it hold over again at your opponent's end step that's just going to get out of hand you're going to get all your counter spells all of your answers back into your hand that way very deadly engine which leads us to number one which if you didn't know by now dead eye navigator is technically a spirit i thought he was a human but yeah spirit kind of surprised at that there's just no doubt about it if you're going by power alone, Deadeye Navigator is arguably one of the most powerful cards in Commander, at least the casual EDH scene. Not a very expensive card, anybody can really get it, 
in combo with it. All you really need are good things like Paragon Drake that can untap your lands. You have infinite mana that way. Also not a very expensive card. So yeah, two card infinite mana combo, pretty cheap. And you can pretty much soul bond after that with anything while you also have infinite mana. So if you have something like a Mole Drifter, you just draw your entire library and then play something like Laboratory Maniac and win. Or literally just play your entire library because you also have infinite mana and then find a way to win that doesn't involve decking yourself out, which is still pretty possible. Overall, just a very powerful creature. And there's just no doubt in my mind why so many people want this guy banned. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this top 10 list. Let me know what you think about spirits in the commander format. Do you want to see some more tribal support? I definitely do. Hopefully, if we get some more commander support in master sets or the following commander set next year, they'll try to include some spirit tribal support for us. But you guys have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video.